Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. And in this video, we're gonna continue on the social media series where we're building a social media app using Ruby on Rails, Hotwire, and Tailwind CSS. We are going over how to build comments. So this whole feature down here, this whole comment section is brand new. I just coded it in this quick video. So we can leave a comment like, yo, what's up? Post our comment, just like that, we added a new comment. And we can also view all of the comments from other people. So that's what we're gonna build in this video. If you guys are excited to see this, then please smash a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And if you guys want the source code for this app, if you you can have this whole app for free, it's down in the description on GitHub. You can download it right now and follow along. I hope you guys are excited, let's get right into it. Let's start with adding the link to leave a comment. So to do that, let's go into the code, go over to app views and the feed underscore post partial because that's where the content for each social media post is being displayed is right inside of this partial and what I'm gonna need to do is take this top level div and you know I'll actually just add another another div because I need to add the link right underneath it this is probably a good way to do that We'll add another div surrounding this div and then we can add a class flex flex call and gap two. just add a little bit of gap it's probably fine and then right underneath this div which is actually the card uh, we are, would put another div and I'm gonna add a width full flex justified between I think that's how I'm gonna have it. And then I'll add the link. It's gonna be link to leave a comment. And then for right now, I'm just gonna use the pound sign as a placeholder until we define that route. And I'll do a little bit of styling, just like make the text large or something. Let's see what that looks like. If we reload, cool, we have this leave a comment text. So that's pretty good. I might even change the color a little bit. Do like a text gray 600 Let's see okay and you click on it leave a comment we might even want to make it more animated than that it have like a border two border gray 600 g2 let's see what that looks like we added border oh and also make it a little bit rounded we can do rounded large reload and we have this kind of nice looking button it's a bit more obvious but I think it looks pretty good. And then if I want to put it on the right side, which I kind of was thinking. Honestly, though, this is fine. It doesn't matter because we also have the reactions here. So I don't want to crowd it up like a bunch of buttons on this side. I think this is kind of evenly distributed. So cool. Let's start with this. And then when you click on this link, I want a form to open up. So to do that, we can use Hotwire. So I love to use Hotwire for features like this. If you want to make like a certain part of the page refresh with content from another page, for example, Hotwire makes this very easy. So to do this, we would wrap our link in a turbo frame. So actually, let's just wrap this whole div in a turbo frame tag, like comments, and then say do. And we need to wrap this in a block and then we end it. So this is wrapping this content. This is what it'll initially show, but then when you click on the link and it goes to the page, it will replace it with the matching turbo frame for that page. So now we just need to create the comments form. So to do that, let's go over to config routes and we could technically do a scaffold for the comments, but usually scaffolds just generate too much additional pages. Like you'd have to edit the show, the index, and a lot of times I just don't want all of those pages in my app. It kind of bloats up the code base. So I'll, I might just do it by hand. So actually we should put it inside of the namespace that we did for posts right next to reactions. Let's add another resources, comments. And then for now, let's only do a new and a create. So the new would be the form and then create is when you make the post to the server to save the comment. Uh, all right, so now we have this comments route set up. So we're able to update 
in the code on our leave a comment link, we can now set that URL. And this would be going to, I think it's new posts comment path. And you have to pass in the post. This should work. So if we reload, as long as we don't get an error, it means it is working. There we go, it's working. Although when we click on it, of course, we haven't defined this comments controller. So we get an uninitialized constant post comments controller. So that's the next thing that I'm going to go and create. So let's head over to the app controllers and inside of the post folder, I'm going to create another file and I'll call it the comments controller.rb. And now we're going to create a class posts and then two colons comments. So this is going to add the namespace for the post comments and then add controller. And this is going to inherit from application controller. And then the actions that we're going to have is a new action, of course, and then a create action. This is where we would handle creating the comment. And one thing that we're going to want to do is set the post, just like we did in the reactions controller in the last video. So this might be a good time to abstract that method into a base controller. And if you guys aren't familiar with that, it, I don't think we, I've even done this on my channel. So this is a great time to discuss like adding base controllers and even how inheritance works. So as you can see, both of these controllers are inheriting from application controller. So they're getting all of the methods that are defined over in the application controller. The only one that is defined is this method for configuring the parameters if it's the device controller. So that doesn't even apply for these controllers. So what I'm saying is we can create a custom controller that both of the reaction and the comments controller inherit from, and we can share methods just like this set post. So that's what I'm going to do. I will copy this right here. And basically both of these, so I'll take the private and the before action, copy that out. And I'm going to create a new controller in the posts folder. So right next to the comments and reactions, and I'll call this one the base controller, base controller to RB. And I'll create this class posts base controller. And this will inherit from Okay, now I can't remember if it's one carrot. Yeah, it's one carrot. That's funny. This is going to inherit from application controller. All right, and then we can drop our code in here. Just like this. All right, so this is our code for the base controller. Now to use this in both of these, all we have to do is inherit from this controller. And because we're already in the namespace, I'm pretty sure we can just say base controller and we don't even have to rewrite that namespace. So that's kind of nice. Uh, we can just literally say inherits from base controller and that should work. So let me reload, make sure everything still works properly like the reactions. Uh, we get an error, whoops. Uninitialized con constant base controller. Oh, I guess I was wrong. So it doesn't really work like that. Oh. I have an idea though, because there's another way that you can define these nested classes. You can use a module or like the posts, and then I can have a separate class. I wonder if that'll make it behave differently. If I reload. We still don't get it, but I wonder, I'm gonna try to fix the syntax. So instead of having the posts colon colon, I'm gonna use a module to namespace this class. I just want to see if it has a different effect on the code. And if not, we're going to have to just switch back anyways, or we don't have to switch back. I like the way of using the modules. Wait, no way. So you guys see how that changed things. Now I can just inherit from base controller because we're inside of the same module. So that's like a, it's a little change but it makes a big difference in a scenario like this, which I didn't even realize. But I remember I had an issue before when I was, I think I was like publishing or deploying an app and Heroku was freaking out. Maybe I had Rubocop or something and it was telling me like, use a module, don't use the, the class of the colon colon. Cause for situations like this, 
it makes a big difference because now we can just inherit from base controller and it uses the one for the right uh, namespace perfect all right let's move on from that so now when i click leave a comment we won't get the same error we will get a different error uh, this is saying that we're missing the template for the new page so now we can go and create that view if we go over to the views and the posts folder we need to create a comments folder i'm going to create that folder and then inside of it all we need is a new file so we're literally calling it new because it's matching the new method in the controller and dot html dot erb and inside of here is where we would put all of our code for our form for the new post form so we can start off with just some minimal code to center the content so that's what i usually do just with full flex flex call item center padding top and just center the elements a little bit and then we could start i guess just we can put a quick div give it a max width mx auto and then inside of there let's create our form so i'm going to do it with form width and i'll set the url to so now i'm going to set the url to go to the post comments path and i'll also pass in the post variable and i'm going to do a block and pass in our parameter oops and because we're in ERB, of course, we need to end off this Ruby here and start up some other embedded Ruby. And right here in the middle, we are going to render the form content. So for a comment, it's pretty simple, right? Uh, we Actually, we don't even have a comment model. That's the next thing we have to generate. <clears throat> I kind of got a little bit ahead of myself. But yeah, we need to generate a comment real quick. And then we can think about what sort of fields we would have now that we have this simple form set up, the next thing we can do is generate the comment model. And when we do that, we won't be using the URL anymore. We could actually use the model parameter and then pass in the nested relationship. So we're going to do the post and then the post.comments new. But we don't have a comments model right now. So that's the next thing we're going to generate. If you take a look at the models, we don't have it there. So let's go over to the terminal and I'm just going to clear it out. And then let's generate our new model. So to do that, you can type the Rails G model command and then put the name of our model, which is a comment. And then we can think of what attributes a comment will have. And it's really going to be very simple. All we're going to need is some text for the comment. And then we'd have the relationships. So let's start off with the body. Uh, that's what I'm going to call it. And then that's going to be type text. That's our first attribute. And then we can set up the relationship to the users and the post. So to do that, we can just type in user colon belongs to. That's going to set up the relationship to the user. And then we can do the same thing for the post belongs to. And just like that, we have the command which will generate our comment model. So that's everything to set up the model. Now let's just migrate the database. And we now have that new comments database table. So let's restart the server and then go back into the app. And right in the code, we, we have the relationship with the comments set up. So let's go over to the models and take a look at that code. So if we look at the comment.rb file, we have a class comment, belongs to user, and it belongs to post but we still have to add the association to those other models. So let's start off by adding has many comments to the user model, and then we're gonna add the same thing to the post model, and that'll set up the associations so that they know they have many children that are comments. Now that we have that set up, our form will work properly now. So now let's add our first field onto the form and we can add it for the body so let's start off with the label you can do that by typing f dot label and then we put in the attribute which will be a body and then you can put in some custom text if you want to for the label 
The next thing we'll do is we'll add a text field, or actually we're going to use a text area because a text field is going to be a smaller amount of text and a text area will allow you to write a couple paragraphs. Or really, I think it's unlimited, but we could limit it if we did want to do that later. So now that we have this simple setup for the body, let's add a submit button just so that we can send the comment once we're done with it. So that's a very simple setup for comments. And let's just take a look and see if everything's working properly. And when we click the button to leave a comment, we get a content missing. That's because we're using a turbo frame to wrap our link. So that so when we make that request, it's expecting on that new page to have a matching turbo frame, but we don't have that set up yet. That's why we're getting that content missing. So just for a second, I'm gonna take out the turbo frame so that we can test out the regular route and make sure that it works, but then we'll put that right back in. So let me go refresh. Now when you click on the button, it brings you to its whole own page and we can see the styling for our form right now. Obviously it's pretty ugly right now. It's all just on like one line, but we will clean that up. So now I'm gonna add back the turbo frame for the comments. And then we're also gonna go to the comments new page and we'll add in the matching turbo frame. And you guys can notice that I'm going to put the turbo frame inside of the div because I don't want that width and like the width classes from the top divs to interact with the styling for the comment form. So the only reason that I have those divs there is just in case you go to the page by itself, it'll at least be centered. But really I'm just using the turbo frame to pull out only that form and show it on the page here. So now that we have that working, that's awesome. We have our form popping in. Now we can just get to styling and making it look a little bit prettier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap the label and the text area in a div so that I can get the label on top. And then I'll put some styling on the body to just make it look a little bit more pretty. And we can make sure we close off that div. And let's reload and see what it looks like now. So we reload, it looks way nicer now. We've got the rounded styling and the labels on top. So just like two or three CSS classes can make such a big difference for things like this. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just experiment with the text, although I think I like the first one better. And then I realized that maybe I don't even wanna have a label, so we can just remove the label and use a placeholder and with placeholder, it's going to put the text inside of the text area. But then as soon as you type something, it'll just remove it. So that's what a placeholder looks like in HTML. It's honestly really helpful. So then we can test it out, enter some text. Although when we try to click submit, it's not really doing anything because we never set up the create action on the controller. But we can get to that right now. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm going to put another div to separate the bottom action buttons uh, for submitting the comment. Uh, and I accidentally did an end <laughs> instead of a slash div. Uh, I think I got confused by the embedded Ruby. Uh, it's more just like a, yeah, I just overthought it. Anyways, I continue to style the send comment button and then let's refresh take a look although we see the error because of the additional end so I'm gonna go back in here quickly realize oh I didn't mean to put an end and I switched that out for a slash div and there we go error avoided so those type of things are pretty important alright and then I realized yeah like I kinda like that styling that looks good so we'll have the option to send comment and then I'm gonna add another link to go back so that we can cancel out of the form and go back to the original just view like uh, leave a comment link <clears throat> so that's what I'm adding I added a little bit of margin to space it out and then I'm gonna quickly add a link to cancel and this is just gonna go back to the root path so you can put that as a slash 
and then I'm going to put some styling, just very simple styling for this cancelable button. So I'm going to do some BG gray, make it rounded, and then a little bit of padding. Like I said, very simple. And oh, I forgot the ending of that embedded review. Whoops. And then now this is what it looks like now. It actually looks pretty clean to me. I like this. I think this UI looks really good. And as you can see, it works very well. You can open up a comment, you can cancel. And yeah, the whole experience feels really nice as a user. Very intuitive. And you can also try it with the other posts. You can have multiple forms open at once, which, I mean, that's how it works right now. That could be a feature, or that could be something that you want to fix. And that's pretty easy to fix using like a stimulus controller to just close out of those turbo frames whenever you click on another one. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add cursor pointer to the submit button. Cause as you can see, the cursor was not changing when you hovered on the submit button. That's a weird bug I noticed with Tailwind. Whenever you use Tailwind with Rails, for some reason the submit button doesn't get a cursor, but the link does. And I'm also gonna set the hover state to increase the scale slightly so it looks like the buttons are kind of bouncing, which gives that user feedback that makes the site even more of an enjoyable experience. So I think that UI is looking really good. Now let's go into the comments controller and build out that create action to get these comments saving. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna access the post.comments and we can create a new one. And actually it's probably better if we just initialize a new comment, set that to a variable because we also have to do a couple more things. We have to set the user off of the current user and then we're going to set the body. But the way that we're setting in the body, we should use secure params because we already have that model name on the form, so it's gonna pass it in in a certain way. So I'm gonna create a new method for the secure params. I'll put that in a private section of the controller and I'll define a comment params method. Now inside of that method, we can access the params and we're gonna require the comment and then we're gonna permit the attributes of only the body. So that's it. And that should really get the whole comments form set up. The only thing we can do last is redirect back to the root path. So that'll close out of the form when you submit it. And yep, that's all you need to get your comments working. So let's send the first comment, test it out. And you can't really see any comments right now. That's, that is kind of a thing that we will add. Obviously we don't have any UI, but if you look in the controller, it did insert a comment. So that's awesome, we have a comment there. So the next thing we're gonna do is add a link to view the comments. Cause right now you can leave comments, but you can't really tell that there's any comments on the posts. So we need to have some sort of UI that'll show you that you have posts. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll add another link. Actually, I'm gonna change up the styling, use some flex to, to move my links. And then I'm gonna add in a new link to view the comments. So that's what we're doing right here. We can do a link to and view comment. And I'm also going to print out the count of the comments. So that'll kind of give it like a reactive sort of look. So it'll like be like view this many comments on this post. And for the URL, we're gonna need to define a new URL to show the comments on. Now, since we're already using a nested comments controller, but we're only using the new in the create action, I think what we could do is add an index action, and then we'll just list all of the comments off of the post, which we already have set. So that's a very easy way to do it. And we can set the URL already by doing post underscore comments path, passing in the post, and I'll do some simple styling to get this set up. All right, this is how the page is looking now. I think it's looking pretty clean, although I'm still kind of experimenting with the styling to try to find something that looks right. I'm gonna remove the text large from the leave a comment so that they're the same size. And now that's a little bit better. They look pretty similar. I think the last thing that I wanna add is a cool hover state. So I'm gonna have it when you hover on the view comments, I'll turn the background blue 
And when you hover on leave a comment, I'll turn the background green. Now, obviously this might be a little bit too much color, but I think there's not much color on the page. So adding this just has a really cute kind of effect for your site. I feel like it, it makes it feel more comfortable when you have little things like that. So now when we actually click on view comments, we'll see this error because we don't actually have a route defined for the index method. So we can go to find that right now. We'll go back to the config routes.rb and then inside of our resources comments, I'm going to allow the index action. So now that'll add the routes for that index. All right, just like that, we have a simple index action. And the next thing we can do is create the view that's gonna to correspond to that action. So to do that, we'll go over to the views post comments folder and I'll create a new index.html.erb file. And that is where we're going to render the comments. So what I'll do is I'll just copy kind of like the styling that I had for the new page. Although I don't want that form because obviously that's the new comment form. So I'll delete that. What we're left with is just like the shell where it's that centering class on the top and then a turbo frame. So really this isn't, this wasn't that necessary. I could have just wrote the turbo frame again because that's the only thing that we really need. Uh, it's going to ignore the rest of the styling anyways, unless you go to that page by yourself without being inside of a turbo frame. All right, so when we do click the view of the comments now, it's just going to be an empty page. But I just want to like test it out. When you click it, there's nothing there, obviously. So I'm going to start adding in the comment, uh, like the content for that page. Now let's go back to the index page, and I'm going to render a partial. And that's going to be the comment partial. And I'll pass in a collection, which will be the post.comments. So that's going to render all of the comments in a row. And then I'll just wrap it in a div and add some classes like flex call gap just to space them out. So just like that, we can render the comments on that index page. And I'm also going to grab the action buttons from the new page. Uh, mostly I'm just using it for the cancel because obviously we don't need the submit button because there's no form, but I want that cancel so I can go back to the regular page and let's take a look at what we get. So when I click view comments, we're actually missing the partial because we need to define that. So let's go to find that real quick. So we can do that right inside of that post comments folder in the views. We'll create an underscore comment partial and .html the ERB extension, of course. And inside of that partial, we will put the content for the singular comment. So however we want to display it, I'm just going to do a simple like rounded div and I'll put the body. And I probably also want to show the user who posted the comment. So I'll do another element and I'll put the comment.user.username right there. And we could take a look at what this generated. So if we look, we have this really, it's kind of really ugly because you can't really understand what's going on there. And that's where the CSS tricks come in. We can make this look a lot better just by adding a few classes. So first of all, I'm gonna add some padding to this div. And I'm gonna do flex, flex call and some gap to space them out. Then I'll make the body of the comment larger. And I'll make the username have a slightly lighter text color. Just so you can see that they're not the same thing. So like you can, a user can visually see that that's the body of the post and then that's the user who posted it. So small things like that will help a lot. And now we can test out our feature by clicking view comments and it actually shows all of the comments for that post. All right, so this is what the UI looks like so far. We have this very simple comment thing. And of course you could leave more comments. Just say this post is really cool. Send comment. Now we have two comments here. Ooh, now, actually I see one thing is the order of things. It looks like it starts from the first comment and goes down, but it's not really ordering correctly. So instead I want to show the newest ones first and the oldest ones last. And we could also show the date that it was posted at. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So as far as changing the order, let's go back to the comments index. And right here where we're setting the collection on this partial to post comments, I need to set the order on this. So I'll say dot order, and we're gonna use the created at. We're gonna order by created at descending, which means it should show the newest ones first. So that is correct. Now I'm also gonna show the timestamp the same way that we're showing it on the post where it's just using that helper method time ago in words. What we could do is go back to that comment partial and I'll go right next to the span. I'll just do, you know what, I'll do in div class equals flex gap to item center. Just put a little bit of space and then we can have that username and we can also have another element here for the comment dot created at and then we're going to pass that into time ago in words this helper method which is included in rails it'll convert it into that human readable thing all we have to do is put whatever additional text we want to have like a go or whatever so when we press view comments now we can see this one was posted oh, a long time ago three hours but this one was posted two minutes ago so that could be pretty helpful and I might also change this text color, make it a little bit lighter. Maybe do a text small. But I think on Twitter or X now, they kind of do a styling like this. Or maybe it's darker. I don't know. <clears throat> Anyways, I think this is probably fine. Of course, if you guys want to style this differently, feel free. This is already really exciting, this feature. Oh, oh. yo, that was weird. I already found the first glitch because now it's saying view two comments. It's using like the wrong one. So when you view a comment and come back, it's actually all messed up. And the reason why I know the reason why, because it goes back to that f post partial. So let's go to the feed post partial. This is really important that I noticed this. Uh, so we actually have turbo frame comments. And the problem is that we have many turbo frame comments, which means we have many elements with the same ID, many turbo frames with the same ID. We can also test this out by going to console, doing a document.query selector all, and check for IDs comments, and check how many we have. Uh, length. Eight different elements, eight different turbo frames, as you can see. So when you try to navigate one, that's crazy. So it would it was never really working. It was always using the first one. So when you come back, it's actually pulling from the first one, which means when you're way down here, it says view zero comments. You come back and it says view two. And I'm pretty sure it's the same experience for leave a comment. So you come back, it says two. And then when you leave a comment, you'd actually be leaving it on the one up here. <laughs> so that's a huge bug. Let's fix that right now. The way that we're going to fix it is by using a namespace. So instead of just saying comments, oh, I think let's use DOM ID for this. I can't remember if it automatically uses DOM ID. We can try it without. So if we do it without, it's just passing two parameters. I don't know if this will work, although it should. So let's try this. And then I'll, we also are going to need to go to the post comments new page and the index. And update so wherever you had a turbo frame with this comments name we have to update it now and pass in the correct post with the comments colon do this here and now hopefully this will work if not I will have to wrap these in DOM ID DOM ID is just the helper method which converts records into unique IDs so if we try it you know what I think it's working perfectly if it wasn't working, we wouldn't even see this form. So let's test it out. I'm going to try to leave a comment on Hello YouTube. Hello, hello. Press send comment. Now it says view one comment. So obviously this is working correctly. So that was a huge glitch that I didn't even realize when I was coding. Like I didn't think about it, but that's big. Although it's no problem because it was like one small little change. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this vid. Post a new comment, let's leave a reaction. This is already such a good vibe.